Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Selesnia Magecraft. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well today. We are going to be jumping into Selesnia Magecraft. Now, before we do that, I just want to announce later today we are going to have our giveaway announcement uh the, the winner will be chosen for the battle for Baldur's gate giveaway do stay tuned for that we'll have a dedicated video on it there should also be some other information in that video we're waiting to see i'm pre-recording so i don't know for sure that there will be but uh, do stay tuned on the channel because uh, we will have some very interesting things uh, coming up for, for you guys that hopefully will be more giveaways, which is awesome. Uh, so let's talk about today's deck. This is brought to you by Covert Go Blue. Covert Go Blue obviously put this together and I haven't really played Magecraft in a while, but it did get some very interesting upgrades, uh, two in particular, but one really, really big one uh, since Streets of New Capenna. Uh, now the big one here is Illuminator Virtuoso. It's one and a white for a 1-1. One, one. It has double strike and while it does not have Magecraft, it has something very similar which is whenever it becomes the target of a spell you control, it connives. Uh, now when you connive you draw a card then discard a card. If you discarded a non-land card you put a 1-1 one, one counter on the creature. So what we're allowing ourselves to do is have a main target for all of our little one mana spells. Uh, ideally, it's going to get bigger and bigger as we do that, but importantly, we're also going to be drawing and discarding our cards. So we're going to be able to get rid of any cards we don't need and dig further into the deck to find the ones we do. Uh, so it's a very, very nice little card for this list. The other one that we have just as a one of is Boon of Safety. Uh, putting a shield counter on a creature doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but in a Magecraft deck, it can really make the difference between a win and a loss. Uh, just based on the simple fact that you get to keep something around, in particular, something like a Leonin Lightscribe or a Dragon's Guard Elite. Uh, I do also really love the inclusion of Mavinda. This is one that you should, I think, play in a deck like this, but not always too many of them because they're only so good. Uh, but they really do allow you to kind of replay a lot. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a really nice card to have. This also does have the Legion Angel uh, uh, package. So we do have three in the sideboard along with some of our lessons, which we can actually pull with Guiding Voice. Uh, which is a really nice way to bolster up our creatures and then also grab another card from the sideboard. As far as protection goes, we do have Snakeskin Veil and Wild Shape, both of which are very, very good. Uh, Charge Through is really a surprisingly important card in this list because it does give Trample and draw us a card. Both of those things are going to allow us to poke through as much of the damage as we can, but then also continuously play more stuff as we continue to draw cards. So very, very important there. Uh, we do also have the shelter for a little bit of protection if we need it. Sometimes this will be played as a land though. Seeing as we only have 20 uh, regular lands and then of course the two shelters, we are a little bit low on lands, but again, we really aren't trying to get to anything too crazy. Uh, we obviously max out at four for any playable cards, but if we get six, we can actually double the 1-1 counters on the Dragon's Guard Elite, which generally we probably won't get to, but it is a nice uh, kind of goal to reach eventually. Uh, things like Homestead Courage are really good in this deck as well. They give Vigilance and a 1-1 counter, but importantly, they also have Flashback, uh, which just means that we can double up in a turn if we need to. So lots of really cool stuff with this. Most of the deck is very similar to what we have seen in the past, uh, but Covert Go Blue did a really good job of including that Virtuoso to give us that ac extra, you know, kind of looting ability with the Connive. So. Uh, I'm really excited to try this one out. I do want to say a huge thank you to Covert Go Blue. Uh, I am surprised to know that you do actually hang out with us every once in a while, so thank you so much. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to have you, but also, again, obviously this deck is really fun. So we're going to give it a shot. I have practiced with it. I'm just going to go ahead and say Magecraft is not my style of deck, so I am going to have to do some learning as we go through this. I will misplay 100% but uh, we're gonna do the best we can, guys. So let's jump right in, let's see how it goes. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. Now, this is actually a really odd hand because of the farmlands. Now, that being said, we do have the Virtuoso and the Light Scribe along with some Wild Shapes. I'm gonna try this, but this is very much not the land package you want out of your starting hand. Ideally, you'd have at least one untapped land. Uh, so you can actually get something down on by turn two. Uh, unfortunately, we don't here, which is, not great, uh, but if we draw a land here, what we can do is Illuminator Virtuoso. Ah, uh, we can't. Um, in that case, 
I'm gonna throw the light scribe out, expecting that it's gonna get burned, uh, for sure. Um, but the important thing here is I want to keep the virtuoso around. Oh, interesting. They fading hoped it. Okay. I'm kind of okay with that. I don't love it, of course, but it's not the end of the world, so that's fine. All right, this is actually very good. So let's go ahead and do this, and I'm just going to pass. What we're able to do here is throw the uh, wild shape as giving this hexproof, uh, which is obviously very important because it keeps it around, but it also is going to connive. Uh, which just means we might be able to get something good out of it as well. Uh, I would love to get something with flashback, like the homestead courage in the hand, uh, just so we can... Hmm. I think I just let this hit. Um, as much as I would love to block it and be proactive, I think we have to wait and be very reactive here. Uh, I'm sure they have a burn spell or something that can deal with this. Uh, yes. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, so it's going to connive, uh, which is very, very good. And we'll see what we actually get off of this. They're going to negate. Wow, they really don't want this thing on the field, do they? Um, interesting. I think I'll get rid of a guiding voice. We definitely want the wild shapes here. These really um, allow us to kind of do what we need to do. Wow, interesting. Okay. Uh, let's play another one. <laughs> um, yeah. And I think we will go for the green here. I'm going to wait. Um, again, I would love to put the light scribe out there just to be able to kind of get more and more stuff on the board here, but we cannot allow them to burn this out, and I'm absolutely positive they will have a way to do that. So we'll see how this goes, but I think we just kind of have to let this happen. Um, no blocks. We, we are going to take the two here. Again, that allows us, we have to do something to actually kill this on blocks, uh, other than without without losing the Virtuoso, to be clear. Uh, and so while we certainly could force the issue, I'd rather wait and really react to a burn spell and then save these for a time where we can um, guarantee that they're going to have to have something else with it. So we'll see. Uh, not super optimistic. Again, this is not a deck I'm super great at dealing with um, or, or playing because I'm just, I don't have a lot of experience with Magecraft, unfortunately. Okay, so we do get to hexproof this. Um, and if they have, so they can't play the negate, uh, which is certainly good for us. They might have another spell, which is fine. In which case, we get to do this again. Uh, and I will fight over this, because now they can't do basically anything. Uh, I think we can get rid of another Virtuoso here. Okay. Uh, I actually will just get rid of the land. Um, nice. Alright, so. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and throw the counter here. <clears throat> I think we have to keep the charge through. Um, hmm. I guess we'll go here. Not really sure. I'm going to go ahead and give it trample here. We probably should have waited on that, though, to be fair. Um, all right. So, let's attack. This is for 14. Uh, and it does also have trample. We probably should have waited, though. That was definitely a misplay a little bit. In the sense that what we could have done instead is played the uh, the charge through after blocks. They may have been inclined to block not... Uh, or, or had they not seen the trample, if that makes sense. So that could have very easily been a misplay. But uh, we'll see. They do play... Was it expressive iteration? Just to see what they get. We do not block here. We take the two. On the bright side, the Legion Angel is actually kind of nice because it does get out from under a lot of the burn. Um, okay. So they are going to bounce something or kill something here, I'm assuming. Um, 
What did they actually get? A fading hope? Sure. Okay. That's fine. I mean, it's not great, but it's not the end of the world. Nice. Um, that's actually very good. So let's do this first. Let's go ahead and throw the counter here. Uh, let's go ahead and throw a counter here. I know this can't attack. That's fine. I think we're a little slow for the Dragon's Guard Elite at this point. So now if they want to double block, that's fine. Uh, yep. So we'll take out the adversary first. And now, I mean, theoretically we can get there. Um, we only have to deal six damage. They do have a few cards in hand and they keep using expressive iteration. This is their third? Um, again, guys, berate me in the comments because I am very sure I'm playing this 100% incorrectly, but I feel like we're doing okay. Uh, interesting. Okay. Jwari Disruption. <laughs> That's not ideal, I feel like. Uh, I will block, mostly because this has double strikes, so I don't know why. I don't see a reason not to. Okay, sure. So it was still correct to block then. Um, now we get to play the Legion Angel. I'm going to hold on to the pathway land here. Uh, the reason being, if we do happen to draw another Virtuoso, uh, it's nice to be able to have fodder for the connive. Like, if we pull something off the top, even though we don't get the 1 1 counter, it does give us an opportunity to, you know, dig further into the deck and that kind of stuff. So, that might be too good for us to beat, sadly. <clears throat> okay. They've got one card left in hand. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. I'll just go ahead and play the lands. Unfortunately, we can't really attack because of this. Um, hmm. Is that expressive iteration four? <laughs> yeah, it totally is. All right, fair enough. Interesting game. Uh, very interesting game. I do really like this deck though. I feel like with the additions, in particular with the Virtuoso, it just feels like there's a little bit more to the deck than there used to be. Having played Magecraft before, it always felt very all-in, and it certainly still is, um, and it burns out semi-quickly, but the Virtuoso gives you a little bit more card selection, which is very important, excuse me, in my opinion. Okay. Curious to see if they attack. Okay, so they are down to no cards in hand. I mean, they have a spike field hazard, but that's it. This is a weird attack. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I just don't block and I win, right? Oh, they do draw some cards, I suppose. Okay, so they do draw, um, but if we were to block, they would have spike field hazard one of these and then killed it. So basically we're just banking on them not drawing anything, um, but I feel like this is probably just the best bet. All right, we did it. <laughs> what? That was so weird. Why did they attack with everything? That was really strange. All right, cool. Hey, we did it. That was awesome. Let's jump into game two. What's up, guys? Before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you, if you would like to pick up this month's Patreon rewards, feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And uh, yeah, I mean, we can definitely keep this. Uh, the Snakes and Veil plus Wild Shape are both very good. I think we're going to end up leading with the Farmland, and then that way we can get Virtuoso down right away. Ooh. Sorry, guys. I feel like I have to sneeze, but you know when it's not coming out? It's so frustrating. Um, all right. Let's see what they've got. Uh, one thing I do want to point out also with the Magecraft deck in general, I don't think the deck is like supremely good. Uh, I think it's a very fun deck and a very, like, over-the-top deck in some cases. But in general, I just don't think it has the legs to ever be, like, a Tier 1 deck or anything like that. It is a very fun deck, though, and that's really what we're shooting for here. So, that's fine by me. Interesting. I'm 
gonna go here. Uh, I have played against this deck before. Let's see what they do, if anything. All right, they're just gonna take two. I'm just gonna let that hit and then uh, pass leaving up these two. One of them. Uh, probably the snakes get veiled, truthfully. Uh, next turn we can drop Clever Lumamancer and then, you know, do the thing, but I'm not super worried. This is gonna deal some damage for sure, but that's about it. Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, that was fascinating. All right, let's play the Lumamancer. So they can instant speed do a thing here, which is like fine. Um, I'm still just gonna attack with both. <laughs> it's not really a huge reason not to. Uh, they, if they decide to block, it's fine. We can we can kill it. Even with the uh, uh, evolving wilds trigger here, it's not really a problem. Um, I think this is just the Selesnya landfall deck, which is a really good deck. I definitely played this like last week. All right. Um. Let's do this. I am going to force the issue first. We will discard you. So they're going to then pop this, which is going to make this a 3-3. Three, three. This is a really funny sequence. Uh, basically, this leads to them not having this on the field anymore, though, is the idea. Um, guess we can go this route. It really doesn't matter because it's just going to get... <laughs> massive after this so yeah cool what an interesting sequence of turns here or uh cards here fascinating uh okay sure why not <laughs> i'm just gonna pass here we're gonna leave up the guiding voice for next turn this is a sorcery so we can't necessarily do anything with it this turn really uh other than throw a counter around but Basically, we're just going to make this harder on them as, as best we can. Cool. This thing is massive now, so that's very good. Um, sure. Alright, I mean, the play is very clear here. I'm going to discard you. Uh, let's pull you, I think. Why not? All right. Uh, we'll discard a land. Doesn't really do that much, but that's fine. Um, I'm just gonna attack with everything. This is, I mean, a lethal attack, so they literally have to block. <laughs> uh, they can double block and kill something, but it has to be one of these two, which isn't really that great. Um, so I'm kind of cool with that. We also just have Lair of the Hydra at some point here. So worth noting that, I mean, eventually we just get them with lands. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, which of these do we kill if they do block? If they double block? I think it's the Fledgling. That's just a more important card for sure. This is a bad block. This is a very bad block, so we're just gonna kill both of these for free. I don't know why they would have done that, but that's fine. Um, I am gonna throw the land down. They could have Doomscar here, uh, and so I want to have as much mana to pump into the layer of the Hydra to finish the game quicker. Uh, that represents a turn, basically. So sick, we did it. That's two wins. I am very surprised right now. Let's keep going. Let's go for a game three, guys. Let's see if we can get another win. All right, guys, here we are for our third game. Probably gonna be our last game, and this is a tricky one. Um, I don't love it, to be honest, but I think we can try it. Um, and I actually will throw this down here. As much as I love the shelter, I think 
the correct play is probably this into Lair of the Hydra so we can get the Light Scribe down, depending on what the opponent plays. Hmm. I'm gonna hold off. They are running black, uh, and so the likelihood of them having like a vanishing verse or something is pretty high. I think the game plan here is gonna be just to be patient. Um, hmm. Okay, uh, well with that, I'm just gonna go here and we'll see if they do anything. Um, <clears throat> again, having having a uh, hexproof option here is really important. This also played around Jwari Disruption. I mean, not that they didn't, they wouldn't have had it there regardless, but still kind of nice. So let's go ahead and hexproof here. Uh, I think we can actually just discard the courage. Excellent. Um, again, I'm gonna go this route, I think. Uh, yeah. Sick. So now we've got Wild Shape again, or yeah, Wild Shape is really the only one. But basically, if they have any kind of uh, like meat hook for two or anything like that, this is fine. We actually get to hexproof this again, so this works great. <laughs> uh, you know when the opponents get really mad. <laughs> um, I think I do that. It's probably of safety but I'm gonna try this all right sick <laughs> it's working great so far uh, let's so that's at one so we kind of just want to pile on to the virtuoso here I will discard the light scribe actually uh, as much as that represents quite a bit of damage um, I think this is fine let's go ahead and do this we're just gonna all right sick <laughs> All right, uh, we did it. That was an undefeated run. Uh, Covert Go Blue, what the heck, man? All right, let's uh, let's talk about this. All right, guys, undefeated run with Selesnya Magecraft. Now, I do want to point out again, that was fairly lucky. Um, I think in that last game, we played very, very safely, uh, and it paid off. I don't think it always will. The likelihood of them having like any kind of sweeper is not, not that far off. Uh, we know that there's a lot of sweepers in standard right now. Uh, and most of them are going to be able to deal with this deck pretty reasonably. So if you do take this onto the ladder, just know it may not go as highly or, or as well as you maybe think. That being said, Cobra Go Blue, this deck is sick, man. Uh, oh my goodness. I feel like the Virtuoso adds such a good element to this deck. Uh, the card selection on its own is enough to keep the deck going at least an extra turn or two, which is very important in a Magecraft deck. And so for me, uh, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty good. I'm not a great Magecraft player, but we still got an undefeated run with it, and that's pretty awesome. So I'm very happy with this, guys. I do appreciate you all watching. And again, thank you so much to Covert Go Blue. Of course, I'll link him down below. You guys know who Covert Go Blue is. Come on. Uh, if you don't, you should. But all that to say guys that was uh that was awesome so thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoy it please make sure you stay tuned later today we are going to have our announcement for the battle for Baldur's gate draft booster box giveaway you are going to want to check that out if you're subscribed you are entered to win so good luck to you guys i'll talk to you then thank you so much for watching